Welcome back to the classroom. My name is Mr. Wong, and today we'll be looking at another past paper question in physics. This is for module five, inquiry question one, all about projectile motion. So this is from the 2021 paper, question 34. We have a three kilogram mass that is launched from a cliff, goes up, reaches peak height, and then drops back down to the ground which we label as point X here, okay? We also have a kinetic energy profile diagram for the mass um, as it's been launched. And we have three time intervals to represent the kinetic energy that's going on. We have T0 here, that has a kinetic energy uh, value of 864, T1 over here, 284, that's at peak height and then T2, which is where we land in point X there. It's quite an interesting question because it does talk about um, trying to relate kinetic energy and the vertical and horizontal components. So let's have a look at what the question wants us to do. So the question that we have here, it says to account for the relative values of kinetic energy at T0, T1, T2. Now what we mean by account is we want to try and explain. So we want to explain the cause for the particular shape. So in this case, the cause is what causes the shape or what causes the shape and the effect is the shape itself. So what causes the shape of the graph? So we want to try and explain how that comes about. The relative values of kinetic energy are T0, T1, and T2. So let's actually have a look. Okay, so this is our actual um, kinetic energy. Just for everyone's reference, this was the motion of the cliff. So if I try and label, I'll try and redraw that. So we have our ball, launches here, and then it drops down here. So this was T0, this was T1, and this was T2. So what we can actually say is, um, obviously, given the fact the projectile was launched, there was, and let's try and label this in a different color, there was a initial horizontal, uh, vertical, I wrote here, and horizontal component of the diagram. We know that kinetic energy as a formula is half mv squared. Now in this case here, the v squared represents the resultant vector. So whatever the initial resultant velocity was, that's what we have there. Okay? So technically speaking, our resultant velocity is, if we draw out the triangles here, is the uh, components of our initial vertical and our initial horizontal added together. So it's these two added together. Obviously, the actual way of calculating is not as simple as just saying you add them together. You, you do need to use trigonometry, but just for simplicity's sake, we'll just write it like so. So that's what we have there. Okay? So that's why there is an initial value, and it also explains why that value there uh, exists to begin with, because that represents that there was initial motion. At T1, we know for a fact that Vy, at peak height, the vertical velocity is zero. So Vy is zero here. However, you can actually see that the projectile is still traveling forwards, okay? Which means that Ux, or the velocity in the x component at this point here is still moving, it's still constant. We know that uh, Vx does not experience any acceleration, so it's going to travel at the same distance for each time interval uh, consistently. So that's what we have. So that's why there's still a value here. It explains why there's a drop, because Vy is zero, but it also explains why there's still a value for kinetic energy, because um, the x component is still moving. And then lastly, we have T2. So the main reason why this 
is larger than t0, given the fact that um, the horizontal component is moving at a constant velocity, so it's still the same here, so that has no effect. However, we know that the final velocity and the y component here is moving faster than the initial y component here. So this y here is much larger than uy, and the reason being is you can see it's taken longer to travel. So this component here, there's a greater period of time traveled, hence gravity can act on the object to make it accelerate faster downwards. Okay, and so it increases its overall velocity going down. So that explains the three values there. Let's try and write that out um, as an actual response. All right, so the way we can talk about this is we can try and split it up into individual components. If you like to talk about them all in one go, that's fair too. Um, I personally like to just put them in little subheadings of what's happening in T0, T1, T2, um, you know, if that's your preference, then that might be helpful. So what we have here is T0, uh, we can write. So why is T0 what it looks like, or why is the shape um, changing like that? Okay, so actually, instead of writing T0 first, let's do a little opening statement of what's occurring. So let me... So the variations in Ke of the graph comes from the changes in the vertical velocity of our projectile. Okay. So we can, I guess we can firstly start off why T2 has a smallest value, um, and then we can talk about T0 and uh, T2. So T1 has the smallest value as Vy is equal to zero, um, and um, and therefore, and thus, according to the kinetic energy formula, half mv squared, it has the smallest. Oh, let's actually get rid of that. So as V is that, it has the smallest Ke value. We can also say it doesn't go to zero. Because we know that Vx is bigger than zero. Okay, so that answers what the shape of T1. We can talk about T2 and T0. So um, T2 is larger than T0 because the um, the vertical velocity, vertical velocity at T2 is larger than T0. And we can also talk about, um, this is, we know this because the horizontal velocity is constant. Uh, this is possible as ux is constant. Okay, so we've talked about why 
um, or we've, we've kind of pointed the fact that T2 is larger than T0. Now we need to explain why that's the case. Okay, so why is T2 larger? And the main reason, as we talked about before, is because gravity has had more time to pull the object further down uh, to accelerate its velocity and therefore travel faster. So from T1 to T2, gravity has a longer time to increase the VY velocity in the downwards direction causing VY time 2 to be larger than UY at time 0. Okay, so that kind of explains and accounts for why we see those relative shapes. We could also say, and that's why the kinetic energy at T2 is larger than the kinetic energy of T0. Um, other things you could include or you can change around is explain why there is a drop from T0 to T1. So we can say that um, the decrease so the decrease decreases from t0 to t1 is because uh, the acceleration to gravity so gravity is reducing the vertical velocity So that's another thing you could have added if you like. Um, so that pretty much covers everything we want to talk about in terms of these variations. Okay, so let's move on to question B. We have a horizontal component of the velocity during its flight as 13.76 meters per second. The question says calculate the flight time of the mass. So, we know that the kinetic energy at this particular point here, if we just have a look, we're going to use T1 as our, our reference point. So, 284 joules at T1, um, at T0 or KE0, it was... 864 joules. Uh, these are important components for us because we are able to therefore calculate the horizontal uh, velocity uh, at the start and then work out time or flight of time from there. And let's also just write down the value of T2. So at T2, it is 136, oh no, 1393. Okay, what we'll need to know is what the resultant velocity was at the start, and also what were the velocities, uh, final velocities at the end. Okay, whoops, resultant here, resultant here. What we're going to try and do is we need to find the resultant velocities first. From there, we can find the initial uh, vertical velocity and the final vertical velocity. And then using the equation V equals to U plus AT, we can find the value of time and add the two values together to find the total flight time. Okay? So, let's have a look. So the initial time, or the initial kinetic energy we have, so at T1, the kinetic energy is uh, 846 equals to half mv squared. We know that the mass is 3 kilograms, okay? 
So if we do our value substitution, so the resulting velocity at t1 is the square root of 2 times 864 divided by our mass of 3 kilograms. And so we get a net velocity or net initial of should be zero, sorry. Uh, velocity of 24 meters per second. Now, if we use Pythagoras to solve, we should therefore be able to find u1 because we know that the initial resultant is the square root of ui squared plus ux squared. Okay, so that's what we have there. Um, if we therefore, we know that ux is 13.76 squared, ui is what we've tried to find, ur we already know as 24, okay? So it's 24 squared equals to ui squared plus 13.76 squared. We subtract the 2 and we do our square roots. So ui is the square root of 24 squared subtracted by 13.76 squared. So ui is roughly, if we write it in four sig figs, 19.66 meters per second. Okay, so that's that's the velocity there. We can therefore now work out the time it takes for it to get to the peak height. And we can also then use the same idea to work out the kinetic energy of part two. So let's do part two first, do a different color. So part two, the exact same idea. So I've already written out the working out to find the final resultant velocity. So the final resultant velocity using the exact same formula of half mv squared will be the square root two multiplied by our kinetic energy divided by three. And that value, let's have a look at what that value is. is about 30.47 meters per second. So using what we talked about before, um, Vy is equal to the square root of our resultant velocity, 30.47 squared, subtracted by our horizontal velocity. Okay, so let's have a look at what that value is. And we get a value of 27.19 meters per second as the final velocity is there. Okay. Now what we need to actually do is calculate the total time of flight. So we might need to push our working out a bit further down here and change the column. Okay, so we're going to try and find the original time to get from our launch position to the peak height. We'll, for whatever reference, call it from 0 to 1. So V equals to U, and this is Y here, plus AYT. We know that at peak height, U is V is 0. The value of U is positive 19.66. Acceleration of gravity is negative 9.8 times t. We're going to move the 19 over. That makes it into a negative value. Divide that by negative 9.8, and that will be the time originally taken to take us to the very top. So let's do that. Okay, so that time is approximately 2.00. Six seconds again in four sig figs, and then the time it takes for it to come back down. So that's from t1 to t2. So again, vy equals to ui plus ayt. Now I've already shown you what that working out looks like. Vy in this case is 27.9. Ui. Um, in this context here is actually zero because we've reached 
uh, a velocity of zero here, negative 9.8 over t, so t is 27, whoops, don't forget the negative sign because it is falling, so negative 27.19 over negative 9.8, and let's see what value we get there. about 2.774 seconds so the total time so the total trip time is these two values added together yep so if we add those together that will give us our final answer which case is roughly 4.78 seconds in total and that's how you do the question so there's quite a lot of steps in this projectile motion question it's quite challenging um, the writing bit obviously with what you need to address um, but also this actual calculation for the total trip time has its own challenges too so if you found this video useful in breaking down how to answer questions like these, like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.